Right, so moment of truth. I've taken those nuts off and hopefully, look at that. Wow. That's lovely and easy. Keep coming. And there is, oh, if only all radiograms were that simple to get the baffle board out. That's beautiful. Okay, carefully lay that on there. Speakers are here, obviously, you've got that one there and that one there for stereo. No good, there's a little tiny, little tiny hole in that one, so I might just have to repair that one. And uh, there's some badges from the front to kind of lift these little tabs up. And they are what hold, carefully turn it over, the stereo, the Sobel stereo badge. Uh, so I obviously need to lift those off before I can change this cloth. I and mean, not only has the cat had a go at it, and you can see it's it's stained as well. It's been stored somewhere where it's got sort of damp on the front or something's happened to it. And the customer's chosen a slightly darker coloured cloth. It might look a bit odd compared with the other one, but I'm sh it'll look lovely when it's in. Uh, they've got some sort of darker furniture in the house, so they, they want to go for a, um, it's going to be like that one, uh, a darker looking cloth, which I shall fit for them. Let's put that down there. Okay, so I'm going to now take these off. It's just a matter of just lifting these very carefully. Now I've moved those lugs from behind. Careful, does it? I don't want to bend it. It's it's soft, brassy stuff. Right, there's one out. So bell, put that on there, and this one, the stereo badge. Perfect. So that's off too. Leave those up there. There's one little lens there to take out as well which is where the bulb goes through the so just let you know the set is on little orange yellow lens we'll put that there this end cap you can just come that end cap on that end it can just come away I'll pop that in there with the other one so there we have the whole baffle board removed all the metal work bright work and then needs to take off next thing i'm going to do is just actually just peel the whole lot off Well, let's take it a bit, it's really stuck on here. So I was gonna do that little time-lapse instead of show you taking it off, but it's gonna take quite a while. So I'm gonna pause the video now. I'm gonna get this last remaining piece of cloth off, which is stuck on like, you know what, to the blanket. So I'm gonna uh, get that off and come back when it's all clear. Finally, got all the original speaker cloth off. I used the, the hot air gun just to warm the, the old glue up and then just a rough old piece of, you know, off cut of aluminium just to finally scrape it all off. So it's uh, it's nice and clean, the old glue's all gone. There's a couple of pieces on the corners need to just really pick off and make sure they're 100% clear because it sits in a channel in the Grams cabinet. And obviously if it's with the new cloth on, if it's too thick, it won't refit, it won't go back in. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is to get the new cloth, cut it roughly to size. I don't wanna, the problem with sort of speaker cloth, you wanna try and get it as laid as accurately as possible. So I like to have quite a bit of spare over the edges um so i can trim it and make it look nice and neat so i'm going to i use the i use a spray glue contact adhesive glue uh, everyone has their own way of doing it i like using the, the sort of basics like carpet glue so i can spray it on here get a really nice thick covering uh, it'll allow me to pull up and, and lay down the, the the speaker cloth if i need to without it being sort of stuck permanently forever as soon as you put it down so that's what i'm going to do now get some glue on here and get the new cloth fitted
So I'll just give it a really good smothering in the carpet glue. You don't want it too thick in one place or it might come through and be visible on the front. What I tend to do is leave it, give it a reasonable good dosing so it looks like, so you get more of the, what do you call it, like a spider web effect than a thick gloopy glue. Let this go off just for a second and you can see in the workshop I've popped the the speaker cloth, I've cut roughly, as, well not roughly the size, it's, it's quite a bit larger, so I've cut it to fit. Um, what we're going to do, I'm going to line them up along the bottom, so I'll get that and, and get it stuck back down. Okie dokie, so uh, the front grille is now fitted, looking lovely. Um, got the badge back in there, and the little tiny jewel thing that lets the light come through from the bulb behind to let you know that the gram is on. So what I'm going to do now is get that fitted back to the front of the set. Well, there she is, a uh, new speaker cloth fitted, a uh, baffle board, whatever you want to call it, and it looks, I think it's really good. Uh, it matches it really nicely with the other dark details on the woodwork, um, so I think it really looks the piece. I'm just looking forward to getting the actual amplifier and tune of the, you know, the actual chassis back inside now, which obviously lives in that hole there, you can see through there. Um, but what I might do is, I'll see how long this video is so far, I might cut it short now and then do a part two uh, for the gram, but we'll see. Um, if I've looked, when I looked at all the footage, if it's not too long, I might join them together. But as we are at the minute, the new speaker cloth is in. Hello, welcome back to part two of the Sobel radiogram video. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in part one, the the speaker itself, this, the the, the left hand speaker looking at the front, had got a, a split on the suspension up here. Um, so I've just repaired that with some tissue paper. And, uh, and glue, and that's all nice and good to go again. What I will just do, I'm just gonna put a tiny little squirt of black spray paint just over that, um, purely because sometimes you can see the white behind the speaker cloth. So just a quick puff. Don't wanna make it you know, too dark or too stiff because you, it might upset the, um, the performance of the speaker. A little light puff over that just to cover that up. Um, we'll get that back in the set then. So as you can see, I've just given it a quick spritz with the uh, with just some box standard black spray paint, just to take your eye off the uh, the white. Uh, it can be as black as you like, you're not going to notice it. But if you if it's a little white blob behind the speaker cloth, you might notice it. So I'm going to go back down here. Oops, careful! I bashed the speaker back too much, and that is going to go back in there, which is a bit tricky. I should have done it before I put the, the, the baffle in. But I'm not taking the baffle out again now, so as long as I'm careful not to hit those studs. Perfect. Now this is, this is going to be nigh an impossible one-handed, so um, I'm going to get that screwed in now and pop the camera down. So that's the speaker in. Uh, next job is to just get rid of this dust muck in here. I'm getting fed up with working in, you know, piles of dust. You know, so I'm going to get the vacuum cleaner in there, give it a good clean and suck through. Um, all these old screws and bits and bobs can go up as well because I don't need those. They'll be replaced because they're all sort of chewed up heads and that sort of thing. Um, once I've got all clean, I'll then apply some audio from the bench uh, to the speakers just to test. Uh, there's no resonance problems in the cabinet, this sort of stuff, uh, before I start actually installing the chassis again. So yeah, going to get that tested now and uh, all cleaned up. Okay, so I've just got the the, the speakers uh, connected up to the bench amp. Just doing a you know a frequency sweep now. You might be able to hear it or not. I've got to turn down a bit so it doesn't overload the whole you know the video. Um, just basically hertz, testing is you just telling me sweep. you know what I'm sweeping. Um, just to test the actual speakers themselves. So make sure they you know they're, there's no cabinet vibration. Make sure the speakers are okay. It's predominantly low frequency. They're going to cause obviously the the, the problem with the speaker cabinet vibration that sort of stuff. But they're both checking out just fine. Um, so I'm happy with those. So the next thing to do is say I'm going to now concentrate pretty much on getting the deck out and serviced. Now, oh, welcome back. This is part two of the Sobel stereogram restoration. Um, as you can see, the amp, uh, the chassis is back in. Uh, we've just got some temporary knobs on it for now. Uh, so I'm testing things. Next thing I'm going to concentrate on is the record deck, BSI record deck. Now I'm not going to cover this again because it's exactly the same as a, as a uh, deck I did in a, in a previous video. So if you want to see how you restore those, go back and watch that. But what I'm going to do now is I've just undone the clips as a matter of just literally just lifting this straight out of the base. Everything's been disconnected. Carefully, carefully. 
and there there she was so I'll get this on the bench and restore this up um, and then we'll uh, have a quick look underneath um, and see what it's see how bad it is basically this is the underside of the deck um, and you can see that they're, they're, they're not as complicated as some of the earlier decks and this is just going to be a matter of having a really good clean up um, degrease uh, all the old hard grease you can see here this has all gone hard we'll take all that off um, and, and also do some work underneath the platter but as I said before if you want to see how we how we restore these I think this is UA14 um, look back on our previous videos because you'll see one uh, that we do for another radiogram um, just quickly this, this old rubber mat as you can see is crunchy and horrible and all starts to fall apart uh, but you can now buy thankfully there's people remaking them so I've got a lovely new cream one that will go on there when it's finished Okay, next time you see this, it'll be all clean and done and ready to go back. The deck's all been cleaned, um, and I say it looks a million dollars. These always seem to cut really well, these uh, UA14s. Uh, such a lovely deck, um, just like up there. But what I'm going to do just quickly is to stick my strobe on. Um, now, I've got a light here that I put right over the top, this old beastie, um, which I hang over the top. Because uh, the, the workshop's on, you know, predominantly on LEDs. But I can use this. It's obviously not going to. You guys aren't going to see it because the, the, the shutter is going to make it all go funny. This is a strobe disc, so I can check the speed. And 78 is running just fine. Slow it down to 45. Absolutely fine. And last but not least, it's 33. So that's all working, you know, as it should do. The speeds are spot on. Um, so final bit of cleaning up to do on the uh, the tone arm. Just that I've got to put a new cartridge in, and then it's back in the back in the cabinet and it's pretty much it it's going to be a final test and you guys can uh, enjoy it working finally just one thing before i put the deck back in um these handles uh, have, have really tarnished badly uh obviously they didn't have a massive amount of lacquer on from the factory so they've got really these should be nice and bright and brassy like all the other bright work on the radiogram but this one isn't well they're both a bit really quite browny colour and horrible. So what I'm going to do is take these off, uh, put them on the polishing wheel, bring them all up nice and shiny again, and then give them a coat of lacquer. Um, so all being well, they should do another 50 years. You can see a bit better now. It's off the off the gram, actually. It's horrible. Um, doesn't look very nice at all. So what I'm going to do, it's going to be really tricky. You know, obviously I can't get the wheel in there, but it doesn't really matter. You're not going to see that bit. This is the bit you're going to see. Um, it actually looks quite nice having the darker piece behind, but this front bit I'm going to repolish up. Uh, I'll, I'll take you through that now and we'll, uh, we'll just put it on the wheel. I'm going to be wearing gloves because I don't want it to slip out my fingers. I'm not too worried about my fingers. Uh, but I do wear a, a visor because I don't fancy this great big lump of brass if it does fall zip out the machine, smash him in the face. So. The polishing compound on first. So you can see it's all nice and shiny now, looking really nice. So what I'm going to do is, it's, I've just warmed it uh, very slightly with a warm air, with a hot air gun. Uh, so it's still fairly warm, I'm just going to give it a quick puff. With some clear lacquer, that's gone. Hang on. So it's still nice and warm. Three or four sort of finished coats done. And what I'll do is I'll just take that back in and and I'll, I'll warm that up again with the hot air gun just to and it, basically it protects the brass because if I left the brass exposed it's going to oxidize very quickly. So the little coat of uh, lacquer, I think it'll be very thick, just you know three or four coats. Um, 
it one takes the really bright bright shine off because it does look like it's just been polished with Brasso um, so it takes that bright shine away um, gives it a little bit of age about it because it, obviously it's going back on something that isn't immaculate it's you know it's it has got a little bit of age to it so this should look sort of the, the part when it's back on um, just one thing worthy of note I did double check that this is brass before I start to polish it on the wheel you don't want to start polishing something on a you know on a high-speed polishing wheel only to find out that it's brass coating over some you know tin or, or steel um, so I just did a, a scratch test on the back I took a you know a, a screwdriver and sort of garage into the back the bit you're not going to see I didn't do it on this one I did it on the other one um, just to make sure they are actually brass um, before we go polishing but fine that looks, that's looking good to say quick flash with the uh, warm air gun just to uh, just finish that off and we'll get back on the gram it's actually quite tricky to see how nice they look when you actually got them back on the gram, but they really do, you know, they shine lovely. They really do look nice. Uh, and they finished that off a treat. So all we've got in here, as you can see, is a great big hole where the deck used to live. So I'm, I've got it on the bench there. I'm gonna get that back in there. So that's the chassis back in and uh, just got some extra cable restraint here. Now, there is some fitted cable restraint here, but I've put an extra piece here before I put the back on. Um, you can see all those wires are there. Uh, the back is now all nipped up nice and tight. New screws in there. Uh, I've had it added extra screws to this, this bottom one because it has started to bend very slightly over the years. Obviously where it's got damp, it's sort of disshaped and gone a bit funny so that's been buttoned up a bit harder with some extra screws and also there's, there's a loud speaker in that cabinet obviously that part so you don't want that sort of vibrating and buzzing around um obviously that's all back in there final thing i've got to do on here is to fit the original knobs uh, and the deck is in there whizzing round looking lovely in actual fact if i just lift that up plonk it in there it's this, I've used it before in videos, it's this guy and his Hammond organ, but it doesn't seem to get any contact match, so we'll stick it up for a minute. There she is, uh, all ready to go back to the customer. Um, just got to give you guys a quick final look around. As you can see, uh, the customer requested some little sort of four inch legs just to keep it off the floor. They don't want it very high. So that's got the little stiny, the little stumpy four inch legs on it. Deck's all back in. I've changed the lighting in the workshop so it looks a little bit more, uh, you can sort of see a bit more of that too much reflection. There's an internal light in here that switches off with the door. Um, so as you open it, you can then load your records on. And this side is obviously where the actual chassis and the sort of radio tuner part of it is. So what I'll do first, we'll just show you the record player working. Uh, stack some records on here. Obviously, because of content ID, I'm gonna have to just be really quick with these. But let it run and you should be able to see those. I love Corina. Tell the I Let it jump through a couple. And actually, in fact, this one might be a bit of a mistake to put on because I don't think it's going to have the... Oh, sorry, it's an earlier one. Sometimes they don't have the grooves that lock the records together. That poor old thing's been played with a uh, very knackered stylus. Let's try something else. Dare and give it any more. I just, I'd love you to you, you to hear it, but I mustn't. I just, it's so tempting because it sounds so nice. So anyway, I'm just going to turn the record, take that up the arm off there. We'll just do a quick flick along the dial, um, so you can hear what we've got on the radio. So there's not very much on long wave in the UK apart from. Uh, oh, the good old shipping forecast in the BBC. Portland, Plymouth, west or southwest, three to five. Showers at first, moderate or good. 
Biscay, southwesterly 5 at first in north, otherwise variable, becoming northeasterly later 2 to 4. Showers could occasionally pour. Yeah, there's something quite lovely about the shipping forecast from, from BBC Radio 4 on, uh, on Long Wave. It's got a certain sound. Unfortunately, Long Wave uh, in the UK is being switched off next year, and BBC will no longer be broadcasting on uh, 198 on Long Wave anymore. Which is a shame, it's been there, wow, since the 30s, I suppose, it's been broadcast there, so it's been going a long time. It's a real shame we're going to lose that. A lot of the other BBC stations are coming off medium wave as well. Um, but we can flick through on the medium. Dreamed of, and then... Mings needs surgery on his knee. He was stretched off in Aston Villa's... And... Yeah. And right at the end of the which is which is really nice because we're losing the BBC and probably most of the other commercial stations are going to be gone from AM or medium wave uh, in the UK. But good old Radio Caroline, our first uh, pirate radio, one of the first pirate radio stations, still broadcasting today, no longer a pirate, stonks in on 648 uh, kilocycles on the medium wave band. But then again, <laughs> they're playing music at the minute, so I can't play too much. I want to tell that I love but the point is probably but it sounds lovely. Uh, quick flick up the VHF dial. I've not got much of an aerial in here, and indoors we do struggle a little bit. That's Radio 3. Radio 2, that ends. Radio 3. We don't have any choice. We have to increase our price. Radio 4. Uh, BBC local radio there. And we've got a few other commercial stations from right here. Central Sea. Radio 1, and then you got the other commercial stuff. And you'll just about get them on here. I mean, this, this is an early VHF, uh, VHF FM started in the mid-50s in the UK. Um, and it, but it stopped at 100 uh, megacycles, megahertz. So you, if you've got any stations after 100, you, you don't really get them in that shot. You can fiddle with the tuner and sort of bring them in, but I like to try and keep everything as original as possible. So there's not much more to show on the dear old Sobel Gram. It's been a real treat to do. I really love this one. I just think they're such a nice looking thing and that speaker cloth I think has gone on there really well. Uh, it really does finish it off nicely with that so bell badge there with the little jewel light glowing in the middle. So I'm going to wrap this one up saying thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, I hate saying this but everyone else seems to say it so it obviously seems quite pertinent to say it. Give it a thumbs up and make a little comment down below and if you do really like the video subscribe um, because it does help the, uh, the old algorithm. And uh, if, if everyone likes it, we'll do some more. Okay, thanks for watching, guys, and see you on the next one.